Good morning, Christ Lutheran. It's been a while since I've uh, met with you um, through uh, an online video, and I uh, hope that you'll forgive me if uh, if I mess up a little bit here. I'm recording live, and I wanted to share with you a few things that uh, we've been working on and, and a kind of a reminder for this Independence Day. First of all, um, we at Christ Lutheran really want to be back in school in the fall. Face-to-face -face instruction, five days a week on campus, if at all possible. At the same time, we want all of our families uh, to feel safe. So with that in mind, um, over the last um, month, um, I have a, a committee um, made up of Mr. Wallace, Mrs. Webb, Mrs. Cole, and myself. And we've been meeting regularly to talk about um, how can we come back to school safely in the fall. And through that process, we have been thinking about things that we can do to make sure everyone is safe. And I just wanted to share with you a few things as we can um, uh, right now and um, kind of where we're at with that. First of all, uh, we've been meeting, like I said, regularly about once a week talking about this. And last Tuesday or this Tuesday, wow. Yeah, this Tuesday, the governor came out with um, a plan for back to school. And so what we did is we took our, our plan that we were already working on and looked at the governor's plan to find some things that we can add to our plan uh, to make it even better. And there's a couple of things that um, I can share with you. Um, we also met last night, um, this committee, with our Christ Lutheran Board of Christian Education to talk about some of these plans and ways that we can um, return to safe um, on-campus instruction in the fall. And some things that I can share with you is we're planning on having face-to-face -face instruction in the fall. If we can at all do that and do it safely, we will. Um, the governor released uh, a plan on Tuesday that said that, that had some recommendations um, in that, and we're trying to look at those as well. Some things that I can share with you is that we um, will probably be wearing masks in the hallway. Our hope is that we, once we get into the classrooms, our students uh, will not have to wear a mask. Um, that's our hope. Um, there are some, there's some gray area that we're working on with the state on that, and we'll uh, be sure to report that to you as we can. We may have some, um, uh, some changes in our classrooms. We may uh, move a classroom or two around to accommodate more space for our students so that they can be distanced in the classroom and uh, keeping them safe. One idea that we have also is for our middle school to be more self-contained in that the middle school students will uh, um, likely stay in their classrooms um, uh, and the teachers will rotate their teaching. So Mr. Wallace and Mrs. Jackemeyer may move from room to room and our hope is, is that will allow our middle schoolers to not have to wear masks in the classroom. Those are just a few thoughts, uh, a few things that we're working on uh, for safe uh, in-class instruction in the fall. We also are working to uh, make our classrooms um, more um, digitally accessed. So, for example, um, we all of our students in um, kinder or first grade, kindergarten through eighth grade will have uh, a Google account and uh, Google Classroom is a closed account, meaning only the students and the teachers can be on it. No outsiders can come into it. And uh, um, we use that quite a bit in the middle school and we're looking at ways we can use that throughout the school. Also, uh, we have purchased web cameras for our classrooms. Now these web cameras are pretty hard to come by. We had some uh, um, um, Mr. Cableman ordered two cameras in March and they just came in a few weeks ago. He ordered a few more in April and they're not yet in. Um, it's cameras, web cameras are 
uh, hard to come by right now, and they're, everything's on back order with them. However, we have um, uh, a relatively comfortable feeling in saying that when the fall comes, we will have ways to uh, make the classrooms uh, accessible by students if they can't make it to school. If a student has a health compromise uh, or is feeling ill, they could, uh, from home, uh, tune in to parts of the class that they're missing. Um, those are some of the ideas that we're throwing around and trying to really uh, hammer out ways to keep everyone safe. And those are just a, a few things, um, a few things that we're working on. We plan on uh, opening uh, in on August 29th with a half day. Um, you may have heard uh, the governor has a five stage process. And if we're in stages three, or excuse me, four or five, we can have in-class instruction. Um, stages one, two, and three are situations where there's a lot of uh, concern for spreading of the virus. And at that point, all schools will probably be closed for face-to-face uh, -face instruction. And so we're working on that as well. What happens if we go to level three and have to close down the building for a week or two or whatever? Um, these are all things that are changing quite rapidly. And um, one of the challenges for this subcommittee and I um, has been that uh, information changes uh, rapidly and um, um, that creates... Uh, a challenge for planning. However, I want to thank Mr. Wallace, Mrs. Webb, Mrs. Cole, and our Board of Christian Education for their work on this. They've been really helping us to uh, look at all the information out there uh, and brainstorm ways to have instruction in our school face-to-face -face five days a week and keep everyone safe. And so, I wanted to, to share what I can with you today. And I also wanted to take a moment to recognize Independence Day. Um, uh, I, I, throughout my teaching career, I've taught history quite a bit. And uh, a lot of our middle schoolers have um, likely memorized portions of the Declaration of Independence. And I wanted to share with you um, some uh, lines of our Declaration of Independence, which um, happened in 1776 uh, and uh, uh, was adopted in Congress on July 4th. And that's why we celebrate Independence Day. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's at the very beginning of uh, the Decla Declaration of Independence. And um, I wanted to uh, uh, point to the fact that in the Declaration of Independence, they talk about their creator. And uh, not all of the signers of the Declaration were of the same church, but they uh, recognized a creator and this is, and I want you to listen to how they ended the declaration of independence, that these United colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. And at the end, and to support this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other, our lives, our fortunes and our sacred honor. Again, divine providence, it points to God. And I wanted to share with you um, a, a verse that um, Isaiah, a graduate in our eighth grade class, um, had for his favorite Bible verse. And it points to this divine providence, who it is that we uh, look to for our strength. And this is Isaiah's favorite verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. In all of this stuff, we've been talking over the 
months uh, since we've been in lockdown about how there's a lot of uncertainty. However, uh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. That's a great reminder from Isaiah. Uh, one of our eighth graders wanted to share that with you. And we don't know how this is all going to uh, look in the fall exactly. Things change frequently. However, um, I want to assure you that we are doing everything that we can to keep everyone safe and holding on to our Lord and Savior for guidance in these times. And so um, have a great uh, Independence Day weekend. God's blessings to all of you. We'll be seeing you all very soon. Have a great weekend.